Well, the Northern Ireland Secretary of State, Chris Heaton-Harris, has insisted that another Assembly election will be held in the region if power sharing is not restored by October the 28th. He and the Irish Foreign Minister, Simon Coveney, were speaking after a meeting of the British-Irish uh, Intergovernmental Conference in central London this afternoon. I, I, I'm under a duty to, uh, to call an election on the 28th. I think it's vitally important that the executive reforms in Northern Ireland, uh, for all the reasons I've given previously about the quality of public services, the interventions on energy that uh, we need to give, um, and are finding quite difficult to do so in a, in a Northern Ireland context, um, we will get there. But it will be much better and much more efficiently uh, delivered by having an executive in place. So I'm under no illusions as to um, the issues around it. But yes, I will be calling an election on the 28th of October if we do not have an executive reformed. Well, joining us uh, now from central London is Catherine Foster, our uh, political uh, correspondent who's down in Lancaster House where the Intergovernmental Conference uh, took place. Uh, Catherine, there seems to be a better mood uh, between the Irish and the United Kingdom's uh, representatives. Is that the case? Yes, absolutely. And time really is of the essence, as we were hearing, because the date approaching the 28th of October, when Chris Heaton-Harris would need to call elections um, if an agreement has not been reached. Of course, um, the government instalment has not been sitting because power sharing has collapsed. Democratic Unionist Party, as you know only too well, Arlene, um, won't go back into power sharing while um, these concerns over Northern Irish protocol are uh, unaddressed. It does sound like both sides are listening and becoming much more emollient and talking the language of getting a deal. I mean, we had Steve Baker, arch-Brexiteer, who's now Minister for Northern Ireland earlier in the week, didn't we, apologising basically for saying that they hadn't always gone about things and perhaps the best way. We also had uh, Leo Varadkar, um, Deputy Irish Prime Minister, saying that perhaps the Irish and the EU had enforced these checks rather more strictly than they might have. Um, I was at the press conference afterwards and also the first five minutes of the meeting, which started about 11 o'clock, and um, Simon Coveney, Irish Foreign Minister, was really keen to stress that the, the change of tone, he said, had been recognised by both um, Dublin and by Brussels. He's talking about the change of tone of the UK, but also I would say there has definitely been a change of tone coming from the EU and indeed from Dublin as well. They are hopeful. He said they are looking for a score draw, that they are looking both sides feel ready and able to compromise, that um, one side being able to claim victory is not a good thing, that both sides are prepared to move. So watch this space. But of course, not not only the deadline of the 28th of October, also next April will be the 25th anniversary of the signing of the Good Friday Agreement, which of course led to peace in Northern Ireland after decades of turmoil. Now, President Joe Biden is going to be visiting and on both sides there is a really heartfelt desire to get this resolved in advance of this date. Um, no illusions about the challenges ahead and the complications. I did ask Simon Coveney whether perhaps the focus on... Um, maintaining the integrity of the EU single market, uh, the avoidance of a north-south border, had, had meant that not enough had attention had been paid to the difficulties of putting a border down the Irish Sea and the problems that would cause. He said that um, they had looked long and hard about this, but Chris Heaton-Harris also said that they hadn't quite appreciated how difficult the protocol would actually make things when it was implemented.